Welcome to the Whiteboard Session, Examining Our Faith, based on Luther's Small Catechism. This week, Pastor Jung talks about the Third Commandment, Remember the Sabbath Day by Keeping It Holy. Let's listen in. Welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us this day as we continue on our uh, journey through the Catechism um, in our Whiteboard Sessions. Uh, today, uh, we are discussing the Third Commandment about God's Word, about remembering the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, and what does this all mean? So, welcome, and uh, let us begin as we begin with a word of prayer. I'm in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings in my life may please you, for into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Amen. So today, uh, we continue on with the third commandment of the Ten Commandments, of course. And it begins with, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. According to our catechism, we are explained, what does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching and his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. Remember the Sabbath day. Now, the Sabbath means rest. It is a day of rest. Now, I know all you out there need rest. You know, you, you work hard. Uh, You try to get things done in in the work week, and you are tired when it hits that Saturday and Sunday. And we all need rest. We need to sleep eight to ten hours. Some of you are blessed with only sleeping six. Um, I myself might go for 12 or 14 if I'm lucky, but I I, I never get that. Uh, But we all need rest because when we're tired, well, we can't really get things done, and we, we can get sick, and we can get weary, and being tired is no good. So we all need rest. Now, the third commandment today really points to that rest and where we can find that rest. And it's very important to know where we can find that rest. Today, as God has continually given these Israelites in Exodus 20, the commandments, right? Because he is God, the one who has delivered them from the hands of Pharaoh, that he would guide them by these words by these commandments to give them what is good to follow his design because well if god can uh, deliver them from pharaoh well as their god he would give them all the good things and again to review he gave them the commandments as things that they ought to do as his children and as his children as He is their father as we are his children and he is our father. He gives us these commandments uh, for, for the good, for what we ought to do that is good and right towards God, but also pleasing towards our neighbor. Now today, as we continue with the first table of the law, first commandment, the third commandment, we very well know this is how we ought to love God and honor and um, revere him in all ways. And today we speak of his word, right? So God's word gives us rest. We all need rest. Physical rest, but also spiritual rest. Physical rest, but also spiritual rest. And that rest, that rest is very important. In the physical, we sleep, we take naps, we take breaks, we go on vacation. Uh, We do all these different things to find that rest. But what about our spiritual, right? How do we have spiritual rest? And that spiritual rest is found today as we see it in God's word. Not just any word, but God's word. Now that God's word is very important to know because when we talk about God's word, that is simply the law and gospel. When we talk about having rest in the Sabbath day, remember to keep it holy, Uh, By God's word, we find it in the law and the gospel. 
Um, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching in his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear it and learn it. We hold it sacred and gladly hear it and learn it because the word is ultimately our rest, our comfort. Because the word points us to the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, Come, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We need rest because we are weary and heavy laden, Jesus says. And that is who we are. We work hard. We go out through the work week. We live in the flesh. We are weak ever since the fall. And therefore, uh, we need rest. And Jesus invites us to his rest, as the Good Shepherd says in Psalm 23, that he leads us to still waters, that he leads us and makes us lie down in green pastures. And that's what the Good Shepherd does. He wants us to have rest. And I know all you who are listening out there, this life that we live is, is a rat race. It's quick, it's fast, and with technology, how, is, how it's going, it's, it's even becoming more quick and quick. And, and so easily do we forget that we need true rest, true rest. I mean, people will just say, oh, I just need the physical rest. I need to sleep, take naps. And when it comes to Sunday, um, I just need to sit down on my, on my lazy boy chair and just rest. But there's more to it when we talk about rest. Because that rest, as we hear in God's word, is, is so important. Uh, Romans 10, 17 reads, Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Right? That we're not to despise the preaching of God, but we're called to gladly hear it and learn it as it is sacred. Hearing it. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the word of God. Faith is strengthened when you hear how the law convicts you of your sin, shows you your sin and how far you have fallen short, but there the gospel comforts you and points you to Christ and what he has done as he shed his body and blood in his death and resurrection for you to give you the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. All in the midst of as you live in this world with the activities, agendas, schedules, the never-ending cycle, we come to church to hear the word of Christ, to hear the gospel, which strengthens you in the promise of God. We need rest. And the word, as God says, gives us the rest that we, we, that we need. And God requires it because he knows that it's good for you. He knows that it is good for you. Now we look in the, old, um, in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, written by Luke, we see that uh, he accounts for the early church. As it says in Acts 2, 42, as it reads, uh, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers, and day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts. The early church came together for that word. The apostles' teachings, they devoted themselves to these words. They broke bread together, right? And that is what we call Holy Communion, which we will get to in the future. But they did all these things because they very well knew that getting together, as it says in Hebrews 10, 25, they got together, not neglecting to meet together as it is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near as they anticipated the return of Christ, they very well knew that as they were waiting in joyful expectation, that the word was their treasure. The word was their rest in the midst of all of their schedules and their agendas and all these things, the busyness of life and all the anxieties and the pains, the struggles, the stress. Through all this, where do we find our rest? It is the word of God. It is Christ. Come all you who are heavy laden and burdened and I will give you rest. And that is what Jesus gives in his word. I mean, Luther would say, I believe in the large catechism, for let me tell you this, even though you know it perfectly, and that is 
Luther is referring to the word, and you think that you are already a master in all things, still you are daily living in the devil's kingdom. You know, Luther is saying to those people who say, I already know the word already. Why do I have to hear the word? Why do I have to come to church? Because when you look in the mirror, as I look in the mirror every morning, I think Jeff does too, right? <laughs> um, we very well know where we're living. We see our flesh. Uh, we know that we're living in the devil's kingdom where darkness is continually around us. Um, and we need that word because we very well know the spiritual human condition, right? Knowing the world we live in, with the devil lurking the flesh we have, we need God's word, as Luther later states. Therefore, you must always have God's word in your heart, heart and in your lips and in your ears. Remember, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. You are living a world as you are catechized in so many different ways whether it's the TV or the media or your own philosophies or thoughts, maybe you're engulfed in your schedules and agendas and, and maybe deeply immersed in your anxieties and stress. And we, we as humans always want to try to find that rest. And maybe we band-aid it with vacations, which is good. We should always go on vacation, by the way. It's always good. Or you might say, I just need to sleep more or I just need to uh, do all these other things to relieve myself of anxiety and stress. But Really, I encourage all of you to go to church. Because there at the church, you'll find the Word, the Word of God, the law and gospel. And there at church, especially in the Lutheran church, you'll find the sacraments, where there uh, Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. As they broke uh, the, the, the bread and wine, the body and blood of Jesus, uh, there they received His Word for the forgiveness of their sins. All about the word. And that is where we receive our rest. This is uh, where the Lord is really conveying to us all that yes, we live in the devil's kingdom. We live in our flesh, but yet I give you my word, which points you in your sin to Christ. And that's what we need to know that in our sin and shame, we are forgiven. We might know that, but to hear it, to receive it by God's institution, by his command, in his word, in his sacrament, what a great, not even a feeling, right? But what a great objective peace that we are receiving as God works for us. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God, as I said earlier. And Luther would continue to say, in quotes, the word is so effective that whenever it is seriously contemplated, heard, and used, that it is bound never to be without fruit. So from the word, there comes the fruit. Without the word, let's say we're stuck in this cycle. What does that fruit look like? Um, some of that fruit could result in self-glory or self-motivated or self-reliant or some type of agenda that suits you. Maybe it's uh, you are doing good and you, there are fruits, but maybe it's for your own self-righteousness or your own legalism. Right? But when we talk about the gospel and the love of Christ, it's by that word that we see that fruit, that vocation in our lives. John 15, 5. Right? I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. All by the word made flesh, Jesus Christ. Hearing comes by faith. I mean, faith comes by hearing, right? Sorry. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the word of God. Here, the Holy Spirit comforts us. Our wonderful counselor points us to the gospel, points us to the forgiveness of sins, the remedy that Jesus cures by dying on the cross for our sins, giving us the hope and the glory of eternal life, knowing that all is finished. And therefore, as children of God, as he is our father through the gospel, we live out our vocations as we bear fruit in our lives. This is not to prove 
because it's already been proven by the word as we hear it. This is not to show us that we're worthy because it's already been given to us in the gospel that we are worthy by the body and blood of Jesus. That now because of Christ, we are set free. We have freedom. We are at peace and we are full. We have rest because our good shepherd leads us to this green pasture. You know, I, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I always call it the treadmill disease. You know, we, we, we think we think that uh, we go to church one day and quickly, uh, let's say one day we say, well, I don't want to go this week. I'm tired. And um, we skip one day. We skip one Sunday. We sometimes skip the next Sunday. And after a while, we skip a month or even a year or even many decades past that, how time goes by so quickly that we forget how important that word of God is. And when we're in that path, without the word, what are we left with? And how discouraging this life is to live in this existence. So the word, heard on Sunday at church, come to church, receive the word and sacrament, but that it continues on during the week. That that word in your personal devotions, in your uh, contemplations, your dwelling in God's word, meditating on his scriptures during the week in your personal devotion, there it is uh, continually uh, working through your week as the day is made holy because, well, the word is on your heart and mind. Right? The great temptation, you guys, is to say, I already know this already. And I know this too. But if we get to the point where we don't need to hear the word of God anymore, Satan has got us in his hands, right? That arrogance in our heart and mind thinking that we know enough when in fact, when we just look in the mirror, we flee to God's word because we very well know that his word sets us free and his word gives us the rest we need because we are dealing with our flesh on a daily basis. Even though we are saints redeemed by the body and blood of Jesus, we still deal with our flesh. And that word points us back to our faith, points us back to the word that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, there we know in 1 Corinthians 12, 3, as the Holy Spirit works faith in us through his word, we say Jesus is Lord only by the Holy Spirit. And that is why it is so important to be in his word. Whether it is to come to church on Sunday, which is very important, I encourage you to go to church Find a church and go. Find a Lutheran church and go because we receive the word of God there, which is, as it says in Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is living and active, stronger or sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of our soul and spirit of joints and of marrow and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The word of God, the law of gospel points you to that. It tears all the way through you. It gets you to the core of what you're dealing with. You know, it, it sets aside all the self-justifications, all the reasons why, all the excuses, and the word of God, the law, cuts you deeply. Crushes you to the point where you are nothing. But it's that same word that picks up all the pieces. And there in the gospel, gives you the soothing remedy of Christ as Jesus died on the cross for you. And he rose on the third day for your sin. And this is your rest. Friends, I know whoever's out there, you have a, you have a busy life. A lot of agendas, a lot of schedules, a lot of things that are going on in your mind. And sometimes it's hard to wonder where that rest comes from. Being overwhelmed with all the things on your plate. But even in the midst of all that you're going through, when you hear God's word, That is where the Holy Spirit is working for you, to comfort you, to give you what you need in Jesus Christ. That word convicts, that word also comforts. Now knowing this, knowing what the word gives to us, Luther always goes back to the reality of our flesh. And he says, likewise, those fussy spirits are to be reproved who, when they have heard a sermon or two, find it tedious and dull that they know all that well enough and need no more 
instruction. And I think we all have had that temptation. We might say in our hearts and in our minds when we come to church, I've heard that already. Why am I here? I need my me time on Sundays. I don't have time for church. Church is boring, right? I know that already. Why do I have to hear it again? I think that's always the common theme for us humans. But again, as Jeff and I would look in the mirror in the morning, right? we very well know that we need the Word of God because we know of our flesh. We know that we cannot find rest in this world. But when we hear that word, wow, what great rest we have in Christ Jesus. And for you who even come to church, I know many of you who might be listening to this go to church already and say, oof, I'm glad I'm not one of those people, right? But yet, are we? Or aren't we? Because even when we're sitting in the pew at church, the devil does not stop. The devil does not stop to distract us from this word, right? Maybe you have thoughts during the sermon, during service that about the work week ahead or your wandering mind or your complacent ears. Maybe you're going through the motions at church saying, Lord, I'm here. I've checked the box for my attendance and I know because I've done this for you, you're happy with me. I mean, we see the story of Mary and Martha. And we see uh, these two people, sisters, as Jesus was coming to the house, uh, preparing for the guests, as anyone would do. There Martha was busy preparing, cooking, cleaning, getting the house ready for the people to come. Meanwhile, as Jesus was in there waiting, there was Mary. Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus. She sat at his feet, and what does it say in Luke, uh, Luke uh, chapter 10? It reads that she sat at the feet of Jesus, hearing his word. Hearing his word. Martha was serving. That was great. She was doing a good thing. But yet, as we see it, she had the order confused. That in order to serve, first it must be hearing the word of God. And Jesus, as Martha was annoyed with her sister, of course, um, I don't know if you've ever had a sibling who um, would not do the work while you're doing all the work. You go to your parents and say, Mom, Dad, why? it's so unfair that I have to do all this work and, and they don't. And, you know, I was the youngest in my family, so I was always on the, um, <laughs> the easier side of things. But... I can imagine Martha being very disgruntled with her sister. And what does Jesus say in Luke 10? He says, uh, Mary received the good portion. And that good portion was hearing the word of God. Hearing the word of God. And I know many of you, and me, even myself when I was younger, I thought going to church was me serving God. Like I was going to do something for him. Like I was pleasing him by my act of actually going to church and worshiping God. But when we look at Martha and her serving, very well, I I think that she thought that serving was the best thing to do. But actually, when we hear God's word, it is actually God who is serving us. God who is working for us to give us rest. That's why we go to church. That's why we come to receive God's word through preaching and the receiving of the sacraments because God is working on behalf of us. He is giving us his word. He is serving us his word through the law, gospel, through the preaching, uh, through the, uh, the sacraments. Uh, God is giving us and serving us his word through confession and absolution. And there in his working by his grace, God serves you to give you true rest. And that rest, again, is Christ. He gives you Jesus. He gives you the forgiveness of sins. He gives you life eternal and the hope of salvation. And it's through that serving of the word that we are washed clean, that we are now ready and equipped 
to live out our days in the rest of God's word. That when we are well rested in God's word, now we are able to serve in his name. All because of his word, as God says, to remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. That this Sabbath day is kept holy by the word of God. In your hearts and minds, heard, received, listened, meditated upon, contemplated upon, prayed upon, that there in the word of God, remember this Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Not just on Sunday, but every day. Be in God's word. For this is your strength, your shield, and your song. Because it is through his word that we have our rest. Even through all the things that you're going through in life at this very moment, it is that gospel that gives us this true rest. The true rest that enables us by the power of the Holy Spirit to now serve, to live out our faith in his word as God works through us as we serve and love our neighbor in the various vocations that we have in this life. So remember that this day, my friends, because his word is true, his word is important, and indeed his word gives you the true rest that sets you free. So again, if you have any questions, please, um, please remark down below and give us a comment. Uh, we would love to discuss this commandment with you. Um, and I, I'm just glad that uh, you have joined us today. Uh, may you all have a good week, and may God be with you as you continue to learn his word and find true rest in what he gives uh, through his word and sacraments. May you all have a blessed day in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening to this study on Luther's Small Catechism. We hope this was helpful as you grow in the Christian faith and study of the Bible. For more information about Faith Lutheran Church, visit us on the web at faithmorepark.com. Thank you.